Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and if you support Ukraine, subscribe to my channel because the world needs to know more about my country. I have started vlogging at the very beginning of brutal Russian invasion and I am confident that together we will witness Ukrainian victory and on my channel including. If you want to get some answers on questions about Ukrainian culture, history, language, feel free to ask them in comments and I'm always inspired by your ideas. And today I want to speak about one topic that appears really often on global media and it's very dangerous and it demands our deep understanding. And that is Russia's desire for negotiations. This war goes on. Actually, when I began vlogging, I did not expect it will take me a year and almost four months. I wanted this war to finish like in a week, in two weeks, in a month, but now I realize that this is going to be a long war. It already lasts longer than anyone in Ukraine ever wanted. We did not want this war at all. We were living peacefully, but Russians decided to invade us and to dictate their rules to a free, freedom-loving country. And um, today they are exhausted. All the aims that Putin put in front of his army failed. No blitzkrieg, no support in Ukraine, no control over Ukraine. We are not demilitarized, just the country. They cannot find Nazis in Ukraine, but they demonstrate how Nazi Russia is. And Russia is exhausted. It needs a pause. And now it starts to do everything on the diplomatic and military level to press us to negotiate with them. One of the most important things we have to understand why Russia wants these negotiations. Because it needs a pause. Not the end to this war, but it needs a pause. Why? It needs to regroup, it needs to remobilize, to re-equip its army because it's losing. It needs some time to think and to make this work on mistakes because it's losing and they desperately need the time. That's why they want to pretend they negotiate the peace when they negotiate the, pair, the pause in their attack. So at this moment, uh, those people who follow updates on Russian war in Ukraine see that Russian diplomats, if it's possible to call this uh, toxic propaganda machines diplomats, they are doing everything to push Ukraine to negotiate. They work in the fields uh, inside countries that are our allies and supporters trying to find these politicians who have like double thoughts. Of course, they traditionally encourage China to play its role as a peacekeeper in Ukraine and they send specific representatives. I don't know, they invent various mechanisms, Brazil and uh, even Vatican, which is like a topic I'm not ready to cover in my vlog because honestly, I don't understand what is wrong with the Pope. So uh, they are trying to conduct various informational campaign uh, to involve uh, respected media and newspapers. And of course, they wrap it all in the need to negotiate and to find the political decision to this war. But they are not looking for the political decision of this war. They need a pause to regroup and to start fighting again, to attack Ukraine and to grab more territories and so on. Actually, we see that from the points which they put as important steps to peace and negotiations. And I will talk about that later. On contrast to Russia, Ukrainian armed forces are strong. We are motivated because we protect our motherland and we have the support of the world and the support of Ukrainian people. Ukrainian people, government, uh, population, army do not want to freeze this war. They want to win this war. We want to win this war because this is actually the only way to end it. Uh, we uh, are preparing for our counteroffensive, and Russians are very much afraid of it. We get weapons from our allies. Our soldiers are getting trained in the best uh, training basis of the world. We reform our army quickly according to the standards of the NATO. We exchange experience 
and uh, we create new uh, brigades and all together Ukrainians are ready their morale their spirit is really strong because once again we are fighting to return our territories back to protect our children to protect our future and to make Ukraine independent and free from Russian orcs also uh, slowly but uh, confidently, we are getting good defense positions close to Bakhmut and elsewhere. You know, those who are aware of various military tactics, how important good uh, positions for the success of any military action. So everything goes fine for Ukraine, if it's possible to say so, for a country at war. And that's why Russians so desperately need this pause. For us to lose the support, the spirit, and for them to re-equip, to gain, and to negotiate something. And uh, also this uh, list of uh, Russia's demands uh, appeared uh, quickly after one video. I will leave a link to this video on my community tab that is a mobilization and blessing for counter-offensive with Zaluzhny speaking to. A very inspirational video that became very popular in Ukraine and these demands came quickly after the release of this um, <clears throat> of this video. So what does Russia want? They are, I don't know, uh, many people called him before the war a horse in Ukraine because of the shape of his head. But like horses are really good animals so I don't want to compare them to Russian minister of uh, Foreign Affairs Lavrov, who is one of the greatest uh, liars and the person responsible for genocide and mass crimes in Ukraine too. So he released this list of demands, which is no different from something Russia wanted at the beginning of this war. Before it believed Blitzkrieg is possible, they will get Kiev in three days and so on. So honestly, um, I don't understand why they are so... Um, chauvinistic, I don't know, self-centered or whatever, that after losing everything that they planned, not managing to achieve their aims, they still voice similar demands. And um, they are, first of all, of course, Ukraine has to be neutral and it is not allowed, like an independent country is not allowed to enter NATO. That is a long-term thing and a new demand not allowed to enter the European Union because Russia doesn't want it. Also, we Ukrainians, victims, those who were invaded, those who were attacked, according to Russia's demands, are supposed to uh, stop resistance. Why, if our resistance is so successful? Why on earth should we do that? Then, uh, stop the supply of Ukraine with weapons. And Ukraine, and I love it how they lie professionally. Actually, we have to accept if there is one thing that Russia does professionally, it spreads propaganda and lies. So they say that Ukrainian people have to accept new territorial realities. These new territorial realities are actually occupied Ukrainian territories that must, according to their crazy, will become a part of Russia. And here I have a question. Doesn't that remind you of Orwell? 1984 and other works, when you substitute crime with a normal term and it seems like you are a normal country. New territorial realities. We are not talking about earthquake or a mountain moving. We are talking about foreign Russian invaders who were killing, looting, raping Ukrainians, occupying Ukrainian historical territories. And we have to accept that. Why? So... They are used to pretend and to try to persuade those few allies that they have left that Russia does everything to stop the war and to introduce peace. But it does that by invading Ukraine and setting demands which contradict to everything that we are fighting for and everything that we have all the rights for. We are a democratic, non-dangerous, independent country that sees itself in the European Union and in NATO 
and nothing will stop us. And of course, our territories must return uh, back. Uh, Ukraine, of course, has its own demands. And these demands, what is more important, are supported by our allies and uh, they correspond to all international agreements and to this normal uh, attitude in the world. So first of all, it is not the victim, but the aggressor that came on our land must stop the fire. Second, all Russian troops must leave Ukraine and return our prisoners of war and those people who were deported. We know that deportation and especially of children is one of the signs of the genocide. Also, we have to return control on the borders of Ukraine 1991, not 1917, let it be, but 1991. And uh, Russia, in Russia, a huge demilitarized zone must be created on the border with Ukraine and possibly on the border with other countries that are close to Russia. I think many of you friends will want that if you border with Russia. Uh, because we have to be able to observe what is going on in Auckland and all of their dangerous moves uh, must be visible. And this demilitarized zone gives this opportunity. And of course, of course, and it was agreed on the international level, agreements on the compensation. Because Russia brought huge losses, financial, but also real human losses to Ukraine, and this will never be forgotten. It is really difficult to forgive. Perhaps we will need decades for that. And serious work inside Russian population until it becomes Russian civil society. I hope it's possible, maybe after some serious reconstructions inside the dying empire. But uh, it is extremely important that these demands are very simple, they can be achieved like with just one Putin's order. He doesn't want that. And his citizens population does not demand that. And they are supported globally. And we have all legal rights to demand this. The only thing that Ukraine actually wants to live according to global democratic norms and its own right as a free and independent country. And here is my most important message that no matter how long this war lasts, no matter how difficult it is for us, today we had three air raids and Kyiv was attacked three times by Russian orcs once again because they want to exhaust us. Especially at night, they have lots of attacks at night. Our air defense work well, but people are not able to sleep well. It's difficult to work. It's difficult to perform everyday tasks. And their idea is that they will exhaust us and we will agree on something they offer us. But we will not. And I ask you not to agree on that too and not to push Ukrainians to negotiate with Russians until our Ukrainian and global international demands are met no matter how long this war lasts. Because if we start accepting the demands of a terrorist state, this means failure. This means a very serious failure that will lead to other failures and fall of the democracy. So we are ready to fight for the truth and justice as long as it takes. We need your support and we need your understanding. And I'm really grateful that on this channel, we have a community of people who do understand that. So if you support, please share my videos. Uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons, and most importantly, for standing with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!